What's up, y'all? I got a banger from the Modern King. Let's get straight into it. Well, I had a different question. Uh -oh. but, I, but But it struck me that in, in the first segment, you used the term woke, and you said that woke is what was sort of ruining everything. And right, I you know go woke, you go broke. Look at Dylan Mulvaney with Bud Light. Look at what happened to Victoria's Secret with uh, the big, big back models. Big back, big back. They soon went back to the fit chicks. Man, you go woke, you go broke. That's just how it is, man. That you're a, a, no, I didn't a, say ruining everything. I said that's why Trump could get reelected. That's why Trump could get reelected. Yeah. So I, I just, the term woke has been, in my view, co-opted by the right and weaponized and bastardized. And um, so I was surprised to hear you use the term because historically, as you know, because I think you're quite brilliant. This is that whole tone policing thing. Don't use these words, like toughen up. That woke is a word used by the black community to note that we must be aware of social injustices. But words and migrate. So why, why is that a bad thing? It's not a bad thing. And, and, and why call it woke if it's about social, social injustices? Call it social injustices, not woke. Originally, that was uh, absolutely a great thing. Alert to injustice, who's not for that? But words do migrate. Now, I'll use any term you want, okay. because maybe that is a word that's triggering, and so we let's not use that word. I don't know, want to call it the, the super far Let left? Let me know in the comments, is woke triggering to you? Does that word trigger you, chat? It doesn't, it doesn't do anything to me. But don't tell me the left had... the super far right. We're well, talking about the left. Well, then okay, but, but we talked about that. I mean, I think we agree about the danger of the super far right. And I, well, you know, I can't say it enough. I think they're the bigger threat. Um, but don't tell me that the left hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm old enough to remember when it was the conservatives who hated the Jews. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was a joke. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> There's a bad crowd to tell a joke like that, man. <laughs> well, Welcome maybe it media. is, but it's, <laughs> but it's true. I mean, you know, if, if I had any doubt that I was right about the change that's happened in the left, watching people protest for a terrorist organization like Hamas, uh, that straightened me up pretty quick. Did you notice how sugar-coated he has to be when he criticizes the far left? Because whenever you criticize them, they get triggered and say, but what about this? that and the other to avoid being criticized. Want to call it the, the super far left? Well, this just goes, it boils down to like agreeing to disagree. <clears throat> it's okay to agree to disagree. A lot of you guys that watch the channel, you don't agree with everything that I say. And I'm cool with that. It's okay. I don't, I don't care. A lot of my friends don't even agree with what I say sometimes. I'm cool with it. I think that's the level of harmony we need to have as a society and as a culture where you can be friends with someone, you can be close with someone that doesn't align 100% to your ideologies and your beliefs. I got a buddy who's voting blue. He's a Democrat voting for Kamala. He wants to be a stay-at-home dad. I'm the complete opposite. I'd rather be a working father. I'd rather be, you know, that masculine role that does the providing and protecting. I'd much rather do that than have cash go out there and make all the money and I stay at home and watch the kids. Bro, uh-uh. That, that, but that's just not me. But let me know. Do you guys have friends? Let me know in the comments. Let me know in the chat. Do you guys have friends that you maybe don't see eye to eye with, but you're still cool with? I think that's the beauty of it. It's not about just being around people that always agree with you. But don't tell me the left had the super far right. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about that because I I think I, you're almost a free speech absolutist. You believe totally yes. in the right to say what you believe. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Her fingernails and dress don't match. Shots fired! Shots fired! That's bothering me. That's stupid. Stupid. But it's bothering me. <laughs> a lot of us were disturbed to see terrorist flags being waved on American college campuses and seeing this. Um, a generation that may, some I think genuinely care about the play of the Palestinians, I think most Americans do, but some who seem to be embracing a terrorist organization over the nation of Israel. What do you make of this moment? What do you think it's a result of? How do we fix it? Well, I, I mean, it's just astounding to me that they can't tell the good guys from the bad guys. <clears throat> I mean, just the, morally. I mean, let me tell you, if you're for Hamas, just live in Gaza for a day. And I'm not talking about while the war is on. I mean, before the war. Trust me, you would go running and screaming and begging to live in Tel Aviv, mm -hmm. a place that has your values. I mean, women have no, I mean, this is a show watched by a lot of women. Women have no rights. Well, only women watch this show. Wait, aren't we watching this? <laughs> <laughs> but here, dude, here's the thing. Here's the thing. 
A lot of people don't realize that if you make over $30,000 a year globally, you're in the top 1%. So a lot of people out there making $12 to $15 an hour, teachers, people that work at gas stations, people that work at fast food, you're doing better than a lot of people in this world. And I feel like we forget that. There's a level of entitlement and ego here in the States where we feel like we should you know, make more and that we should damn the rich and the people that are doing really well should have to pay more taxes and have to suffer just as much as we, um, the, or the, the p people that don't make as much money. Um, I've been I've been there, dude. I was a broke college student at one point in time. I thought that it was awful that people could be millionaires and billionaires. But now that I've you know found some more success in my life, I'm like, you know what? It's okay. I'll pay more taxes. I'm cool with that. I'm cool. I'm cool with it. I'm okay with that. But the thing is, you have to realize that you're only going to get paid the compensation that you deserve because the value that you bring to the market has to be of a certain caliber. If you want to get paid more, like if you guys are, let's say you're working a, a job right now, a dead end job, someplace you don't like, someplace you don't want to be at, that you don't make good money, you have to realize that you have to up your value to the market. You want to get paid more, you have to bring more value to the market. Go be a software engineer, go be a truck driver, go start your own fleet of trucks. Go be a business owner, go buy a wash material, go buy a laundromat, go start buying vending machines and putting them up in different places. Like you have to provide more value if you want more compensation in the market. That's just as simple as that. And I feel like we forget that in the States. Right. In this place and a lot of majority Muslim countries around the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is no equal rights as far as speech, dress, opportunities for education, uh, reproductive rights, freedom from sexual violence, freedom from sexual harassment. The LGBTQ These, community as well. I mean, yes. you, 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 uh, that too. Uh, but you, you, you throw around the term apartheid. Mm. There is a gender apartheid in a lot of the world where women are second class citizens uh, at best. Are you, are you at but, all concerned about the innocent civilians that have been collectively punished and, and murdered, largely it, well, children and, and, and women. Of and are you at all concerned about of, the bro, fact what that. What is this question? She's just. The International Criminal Court just hey, today. Go back, go back. Of course. Are you at all that have been collectively punished and, and murdered, largely it, well, children and, and, and women? Of and course. are you at all concerned about of, the fact that the International Criminal Court just today issued a subpoena for uh, Bibi Netanyahu? Well, that's. that's what she, she asked like five questions in one. What's the, what's, the, what's the question? Just did there was a non sequitur. She took his logical argument and tried to make it sound ridiculous by using very extreme examples in an attempt to make it sound like he is saying that those extreme things are okay mm -hmm. when that very clearly wasn't what he was saying. Non sequitur. It's ridiculous, but it's a war. Why? It's a war. Because it's a war and they were attacked and they're defending themselves. Get now, the this is a war. Do you think Hamas needs to be destroyed? This is the question. Yes. Do you, you do? Yes. So how okay, can we well deal I, with a ceasefire? All right. So Hamas needs to be destroyed because they are a terrorist organization who, have, who say openly that they want to commit genocide on the Jewish people, on the state of Israel. That's what from the river to the sea means. Okay? And they say it very openly. They say, we did this attack. They've attacked the, uh, Israel five times. They've started five wars since they were given that land back. They could have chosen to turn that place into any place they wanted to, and they took a lot of money that they took from the international community, and they spent it on bombs and guns and building tunnels. Can I so if they need to be destroyed, <laughs> how do we do that? It's, it's a war. Um, I don't know how to do that, and you don't know how to do that. I assume the Israeli. Do lines? Of course, everybody is, but that's what happens in a war. Here's a way to stop that. Stop attacking like Israel. How, that's, uh, he said all of that, and she goes, Well, dude, what about the innocent lives? Like, yes, of course I care. Like, come on, honey. There was that last little part of That's what happens in a war. Here's a way to stop that. Stop attacking Israel. of Israel and all the Jews. They've, they're calling for the annihilation of the Jews. And so well, you can't really defend no, that on the other no, side very easily. And, but before we go, I want to say... No, we're not going anywhere no. yet. We're okay, but I just want to say one thing. As we were talking in the break, <laughs> yeah. Joy is a wonderful human being, and she should not be afraid that people are going to attack her because mm -hmm. she said the thing about the swastika on the cap. Well, she well, does not is... think that all... We, as you said to me what in the break, you do not think that all the people who are for Trump are no. Nazis. No, I don't. Yes. You I don't. don't. I have some in my family. I don't think they're Eggs. Nazis. Okay, okay, great. I have some in my family. Like, they're a, just a subspecies of human. 
Bro, I don't think either which way. I don't care who you vote for. You're still a person at the end of the day. Who cares? It's just a political ideology. It's the illusion of choice. It's the bipartisan system, right? Have you ever wondered why they only give you two parties to choose from? Don't you think it's a little bit fishy? Don't you smell something in the water with that? It smells like... Because they're giving you the illusion of choice. This is something you can do in sales. You give people two options, right? And either option, you have to pick. <laughs> in, my, in my opinion, to have options, you have to have three or more. Three or more is an option. Two is not an option, dude. Not an option at all. <laughs> I'm glad we got I that. I, I don't yeah. want you hurt in the supermarket. I have a question for you because I don't know if you've <coughs> noticed what I've noticed. But I find that oftentimes when I'm watching the news, I'm only getting portions. Because one of the things that happens, I was listening to you talk about kid, you know, the kids that had the Hamas uh, flags. I. Huh? It reminded me of when people were saying Antifa is there, you know, and doing it. So bad players show up and make stuff happen. But do you find that it, the view that we're being shown seems to be meant to guide us into thinking about people one way when in fact it may be a much bigger conversation? Well, oh, are you being for real right now? Yes. All news stations are biased. CNN, Fox. Even the even the independent independent outlets, all this stuff is biased. They're owned by someone. You know what I mean? They're not owned by the people. There's a big backing of somebody supporting them financially. Yes, of course it's a certain view. That's why you don't watch the news. That's why you just get on Twitter. <laughs> just get on Twitter. You want the good news? Get on Twitter, bro. I'm telling you, it's way better than the actual news. <laughs> Of course. I mean, the media is always going to just chase what is interesting to watch. I mean, I used to be able to watch the nightly news, for example. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. I mean, f first of all, it's, it should be called, here's some video we found that's fun to watch. Yeah. And, and it's narrative over truth. <clears throat> you know, yes. I mean, it's not like when I hear people talk on either side of it. Well, stories I, sell, facts don't. I always think they're lying. They're just telling me half of it. Yeah. yeah. And I never trust them anywhere until I check out the other half. Yeah. Bro, I, I like Bill Maher. He cool. He cool. He's controversial. I like him. But is it just me or does he look like the fifth Ninja Turtle? Shots fired! Shots fired! I'm just saying, dude. And that's, that's just, it's tedious. Yeah. You know, I just want one place. And of course, it's my book and my show. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Where you can get both. You were actually, you're leading me right into what I was going to talk about because and we are talking about your too. Sorry. yeah year two. We're yeah. talking about your new book, which yes. is that twenty oh. years of your editorials re-edited and reimagined right. right in time for Father's Day. Um, <laughs> what yes. do you want people to take away? Bro, he does look like the fifth Ninja Turtle, bro. From reading, yeah. It. Uh, well, I think a lot of see. I think we're tribal now, which is not good. And I think there's four tribes. Basically, there's old school liberals, which I would mostly count myself as old school conservatives. There's still some of those You've left. You've changed, though. I find it funny how they say anyone. You've changed, though, in the gaslighting. Can you imagine being on the show and having four women just bark down your neck constantly and gaslighting you anything you say and just nitpicking every word? <laughs> That'd be so annoying. Who doesn't go off the deep end like they did have changed. Meanwhile, they can't even let him finish a sentence uninterrupted. Well, show it me a man that hasn't changed his beliefs in the, f in the past 30 years, and I'll show you a man that hasn't grown up and hasn't matured. I think Muhammad Ali has a quote, and he's like, if you, f if you have the same beliefs of when you were 20 as you do when you're 50, he's like, you wasted 30 years of your life. What's, a, what's the other quote? Show me, a ma show me an old man who's a liberal, and I'll, uh, an old man who is liberal and a young man who is conservative, because usually it's flip. Ah, I can't remember the quote. I'm stupid. Stupid. If he says something that criticizes their narrative. Uh, Wait, what, what are the other two? Go well, ahead, what are the I, other two? Well, that's what I, <laughs> well, that's what I was trying to find out in this book. I don't think yeah. I have. Mm. Um, and, you know, we were saying in the break, we have to come up with a new word for woke. Let's have a yeah. contest because this is a, a word that's yeah. triggering. But, I mean, those concepts that are different than they were five years ago, I mean, we used to do, uh, I, well, you did it. I was a guest on the, the what was the homeless show? Uh, uh, Comic, Comic Relief. Relief. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. You were, uh, great show. Yeah. And homeless was a term that I thought we kind of came up with because people were calling them bums and yes. vagrants right. and hobos. Yeah, now that's homeless. Now, no. Bro, do y'all remember bum fights? <laughs> do y'all remember that? 
That's old YouTube stuff right there. Bump fights, man. It's crazy. It's unhoused. Well, it's now. it's people unhoused. experiencing Un unhoused. What? This. Uh, like, but they're experiencing it on the Is street. Is this like the whole maps thing? The minor attracted persons. Good lord. Yeah. Okay. The liberal view of that was for compassion's sake. We're the liberals. We're compassion. Let's yeah. get these people off the street. Yeah. That's not the view of the whatever word we're going to come up with for this. Their view of the homeless is uh, they're an endangered species that needs to be protected in their natural habitat, <laughs> living their best life under a bridge. Yeah. You know, that to me is crazy. That's the kind of things I haven't changed on that. I still think we should get these people off the street. That's yes. the compassion's sake. So yeah. I didn't change. They changed. And there's lots of examples of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there, there's lots of examples examples of the media giving one side, as she says. It's yes. the reason, I think, that we don't know about Biden's accomplishments. Because it's too boring to say he fixed the exactly. infrastructure, he fixed the economy. Not sex Did he fix the economy? Let me know, chat. Let me know. Do, do you feel like Biden, it, personally for me, my groceries went up a lot. Gas is more expensive. Everything's very expensive now. It's not as cheap as it used to be. I, I don't ever remember a time when Trump was president when eggs were nine dollars a carton, or milk was seven bucks. I, I really don't know. I don't know. It's wild to me. I saw this video on Twitter. I want to show you guys. So there's a stat on Facebook, and basically it says men are not obsessed with women like they used to be. Y'all don't find that kind of weird. Good, good. <laughs> what is there to be obsessed with? The modern dating market's ruined. It's crazy. And to be honest, no, I don't find that kind of weird. Because Based. what exactly is there for men to be obsessed with in today's world? Women have left no room for imagination, none whatsoever. It's like your sense of entitlement is out of control. Mm. Your expectations are unrealistic. Y'all walk around showing your bodies half dressed, half exposed 24 7, out smoking, drinking, partying 24 7, on the scene 24 7. A lot of y'all are not even coming with nothing to the table because you're too busy with your hand out trying to see what man got the next bag so he can sponsor your lifestyle to make you look like you're living a lifestyle to post on the internet. It's like a lot of y'all don't have common sense. A lot of y'all don't don't know how to hold a conversation a lot of y'all don't have no originality about yourselves everybody is getting the same body everybody is getting the same hairstyle everybody looks the exact same and it's like y'all get that confused oh well men like that no men will fuck that but men are not wiping that and they're not cuffing that and i think y'all are starting to realize that and then the first thing y'all want to say is oh well they're gay they're sassy no they're not they're just tired of what you guys are presenting and if y'all are here to give them free pussy, free looks, and free everything they ain't got to work for, uh, why would they? But they're never going to take you serious. So it seems to me like a lot of y'all are now starting to realize that you're either losing value or have lost value from chasing attention. And now that's something that y'all got to deal with and y'all can't face that fact. Men love women that are exclusive. Women that are put up. Women that every man can't say he had or can have. Simple as that. This woman is preaching absolutely preaching but to her point yeah we don't there's no pride there's no honor in being with a woman that's been ran she's a runner she's a track star i came up with this the other day basically if as a man you're out and about and other men see you with a woman of high value and what i mean by how about high value is quaint uplifting elegant empathetic and natural and she's got that that beauty that essence she can draw in the energy from the room like Cass. like i walk in when she's got a dress on and other men say wow this guy's valuable but if i walk in with a woman and she's disrespectful towards me she's arrogant she treats me like trash she talks back a lot she doesn't know how to be submissive and quaint and uplifting other men want to disrespect me so the woman that you have is a direct reflection on your value as a man. So, and, and it, but it goes a little bit deeper than that. So, your personality is the equivalent to the beauty of the woman that you can procure. I'll say it again. Your personality is equivalent to the beauty of the woman that you can procure, or the, or the beauty of the woman that you can get. So, if you go look at a guy and he has a beautiful woman on his arm and he doesn't have a lot of money, more than likely he has a good personality. This guy's figured it out. He's either funny or something like that. Because if you can make her laugh and giggle, you can make her cheeks clap. Oh, <laughs> let me, damn it. If you can make her laugh and giggle, you can make her cheeks clap and jiggle. <laughs> Do you hear me? Do you hear me in the back there? Man, we got to start coming up with some of these quotes. I think one of the ones the other day was, um, 
what was it? If she's good, or if he's good enough for you, he's good enough for a few. What was the other one? Um, if she, if if he's, or if she's making you wait, another dude hit it on the first date. Bro, somebody's got to start putting these together. Got to start getting some T-shirts or something, a quote book, a Levi Nicks quote book. Who's gonna work on it for me? I need somebody to do that. <laughs> but Loki, did you have a good time today? He's absolutely tuckered out, man. So tired. He stayed up late last night. I could tell because he was wandering, walking around. But it is what it is, man. He'll sleep all day. He sleeps 16 hours a day, dude. The life of a freaking dog. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Get the ebook, The Four Pillars of Personality. It is in the description. It makes you irresistible to women and respected my Ben. Good Lord. A word, vomit, tongue, salad today. I can't I can't speak. Um, but yeah, cop the ebook. I think we've sold over 50, maybe even 60 copies now. Uh, hop in the Discord if you want to chat offline. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I will see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.